I don't got my Maple Leaf fans. I will take you live to a um, pre-game co press conference before the game tomorrow in LA. Got a pre-game Western road trip. So my uh, updates will be probably up to like in the afternoon the next day because the games are going to finish late for the next um, three road games. So instead of me doing highlights at midnight, I'm doing highlights in the afternoon at some point during the three road games. So keep keep in mind that's what's gonna be happening for the next three road games. Okay, I'll take it live to the press conference before I take on the LA Kings tomorrow night. Introducing the Capital One Smart Rewards MasterCard. The only card in Canada that rewards... Uh, obviously a very, very proud moment and I was very excited and felt like I had done something good uh, to get this call up. So yeah, I'm very excited for the future. What do you think you've been doing so well with the Marlies that kind of warranted this call? Uh, I mean, we we had a good start as a team, and we've, we've been playing good there. And uh, I feel like I I've found my pace there uh, and been been uh, fairly consistent in my performances, uh, and uh, I think that's a part of it. Who called you? Uh, Brad called me and, and uh, just uh, congratulated me and explained the situation. Kinda. Just. How have you adapted to North American ice so easily? I mean, like to hear some goalies have a difficult time in North America getting adapted to the pace of play. Was it a challenge for you at first, or was it fairly easy? I mean, it's it's always uh, different a difference, you know, but. Uh, I came here in, in August uh, fairly early, so I got a lot of time even before training camp to, to adapt, and I think that helped. And obviously, my size helps a lot. Uh, the small eyes, it almost almost makes it easier. Like I can use it more more frequently here, I think. So yeah. How does it, how does the size help you? Use it? Like, is it just the side, less side to side, or like how? It's a lot of. A lot of shots from from angles, and the players have generally less less pace coming from 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 there because there's less space, uh, and it's a lot of pucks just thrown into the net because of size of the ring too, because that's the only option sometimes. So I feel like just being in position is more more uh, uh, gives you an advantage here more than on a bigger ring. It's been like uh, actually practicing with the guys here for first practice and kind of the pace that compared to maybe something else. That might be <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Uh, it was really exciting. It obviously it's a little more physically uh, harder because uh, I mean everything's a little quicker. But uh, so it was, it was a tough practice, but it was very fun. What kind of advice did you get from Curtis Sanford? What's that? What kind of advice did you get from Curtis Sanford? Today, just. Uh, don't think too much. Like, just kind of breathe, keep calm, and stay present, and just yeah, compete for a puck, basically. Yeah. I know you face training camp a lot of these guys shooting, but uh, Austin Matthews, and the way some of those guys shoot, how is that uh, different than the AHL? Uh, hard to describe. I mean, basically quicker, quicker, more accurate. Um, and obviously harder because of that. So yeah, it's it's gonna take take a few practices to adapt. I think. What's the advantage of your height in terms of seeing through guys, especially on the power play? Yeah, that that's obviously one more advantage. Uh, 
I mean, I've never really had anyone in front of me that's the same size as me, so, <laughs> uh, so that, that helps a lot. I've had it once or twice, and, and it was much more difficult then. Uh, so I, I know it's a big advantage, and just important not to get too straight. Who's the first person that you called after you got called up? Uh, I have my my brother and his girlfriend in my apartment already, so I oh, they're here right now. yeah, so I, I met them first and called my dad straight up. What was that feeling like to, to share that news? It was good. Yeah, I called my dad and mom after we shouted it over together and spent spend the night together yesterday. So oh, nice. It's good. Do you, do you like the Hildebeest nickname, or is there something else you prefer? <laughs> uh, I don't really mind. I don't care to be honest. It works. It works for me. This obviously happened sooner than you were probably anticipating. What makes you confident that you're ready for this challenge? I mean, basically, I'm going to go in here and like take advantage of this opportunity and and uh, do everything I've been doing so far this season, because uh, that's obviously worked. And, and uh, I believe it's important to not overthink stuff and just Take it day by day, and, and yeah, not everything. Stop, not do anything too different. Just because you're here, like keep doing what you're doing, and just and just go from there. That's that's the plan. When you heard that you were getting scratched, and you were just scared, reaction to how easy things go through. Yeah, for sure. Like I was a little bit surprised. I came for the for the for the game, and I got this message. So yeah, I was I was surprised, but it is what it is. So I need to focus on the on the next game and and be better. I would say I, I was like struggle a little bit at, at, the, at the start of the season, but I think lately I, I found my my game back. I think so. Yeah. Is that why you say you were surprised the other day that you were not playing? Or did you see you know, maybe some of the things that happened against Columbus? Did you understand? Or how did you have yeah, like I said, I was I was surprised. I did, didn't expect it, and I came and. Wanted to be ready for game, but I got I got message from Sheldon that I I'm out. So yeah, I was surprised, but it is like I said, it is it is what it is, and I want to be ready for the next game. How do you take this forward now? Just keep keep working hard and and be better and try to help the team win. Once everything's perfectly organized, I'll start working on my thesis. Grammarly will ensure you feel confident nailing your final thesis by supporting your writing journey from start to finish. Welcome to Ideation Station. How do I write the perfect intro paragraph? You start with understanding what makes a perfect intro. Grammarly can highlight... Uh, what are your first impressions of Hilton? Well, obviously it's not my first impression because he's he's been with us here and we've been been watching and monitoring closely. So obviously the size stands out. Um, that would be the first and obvious thing when you when you meet him uh, or you see him on the ice. But the other piece is just he's just got uh, great demeanor about him, great uh, great attitude, very positive, very uh, nice guy that's eager to work and learn and do all those kind of things. And and I would imagine. All of those things are the reasons why he's gotten off to such a great start with the Marlies and why, you know, when we need a guy that he is that guy. So, uh, yeah, credit to him for the work that he's done. What's your plan for him for the week? Plan is to just take each day as it comes uh, here and try to get him up to speed at the NHL level. Uh, obviously, NHL shooters and such, are, it's, it's a different animal as he may have learned when Austin came down and, and blew one by him there uh, in one of the first drills. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think just you want to get comfortable, which is what I saw as this, uh, the more and more the skate went on, you could really see, you know, that he was getting comfortable in his reads and obviously the size, a lot of pucks just, just hit him because of the size. But uh, uh, plan is just to get him comfortable here. And, you know, my message to him is he's here. He's the second guy right now. and. Uh, like you would have the message for any guy that's the second guy is your job should be ready uh, uh, at, for for any any opportunity that might come up or any time we we may need you. Um, as we look at our week and in particular this back to back that's coming, um, we haven't ruled out utilizing Jones in both those games. Uh, I think as as far as um, as far as back to backs go, it's 
probably the easiest one you're going to get on the road in terms of not having to, no flight or anything like that. Instead of busing to the airport, we'll be busing to, to change hotels. Um, so we'll, we'll take it a day at a time in, in terms of that. But I think it's just him, you know, enjoying his time here and maximizing it, whether that's to be ready for us or to just continue his, his development. If Sammy clears, what are your plans for yeah, well, obviously we do have to wait and see on that. And, and you know, we're, from my perspective, I'm hopeful that he clears and he remains here and uh, there's a plan in place, if that's the case, that we can continue to work with him. I think it would just really, quite honestly, be a continuation of what's been happening here. Um, but it's just, you know, basically removing him from the situation to just focus solely on himself and, and his game. And then, uh, you know, you you would take it from there kind of thing. But uh, uh, from my perspective, he's, he's a good goalie. He's played a lot of good hockey for us, as we all know. And we need to do all that we can to try to get him back uh, So to that. So that would be uh, that would, would be the plan. What's your sense of the group as a whole? As the calendar turns to New Year, Sheldon, and, you know, people talk about optimism at the beginning of the year. But what's your sense of the group and looking ahead here? The group? You know, the group feels good. We haven't gotten the results that we want here uh, since coming back. But we were... You know, we, we, we felt quite good about a lot of the things we, we've been doing. And the uh, last couple of games in particular on the on that back-to-back with, you know, with uh, Columbus and Carolina, I thought that we did a lot of good things and very easily could have had four points coming out of that. But uh, wasn't the case, and I think that continues to drive you. But, you know, just focus on how we've played. Uh, there's been a ton of really good things there, I think. When you step away from the results, you know, Columbus, there's a lot of pucks that go in our net. And uh, Carolina, we make some mistakes on special teams on the penalty kill that end up in our net. But uh, five on five, I think two of our best defensive efforts of the, of the season uh, in terms of not giving up very much. And, uh, you know, Carolina games, it's a and there's not much between the two teams, and you got to really work for your offense. And I think that sets us up well for this trip here to start off in LA. Which, you know, you look at Carolina and LA; it's two of the best defensive teams in the NHL. And, and, and coming out of that Carolina game, it, you know, it, we should know exactly what we're in for in terms of, you know, uh, the challenge that we have uh, going into LA. John was saying that uh, the Kings do a number of very unique things in terms of how they defend. What do you see from them when you? Well, they're one, they're one, three, one in the neutral zone would, would be the most unique thing that they do, and they're not the only team in the league to do that. But they they've done it longer and, and probably better than anybody in the league, and then that kind of sets up a lot of their defensive game. But they a lot of it too is just a mindset. They close well. They good sticks. Similar to Carolina in that way, they just take away your space and your time, and whether that's on their penalty kill or or at five on five, they make it really hard to get to their net. So it's going to be a. Uh, Came about working and pace and and patience. You know that's a big part of it. And it was the other night too against Carolina. We just they uh, obviously we talked about special teams were the difference. But ultimately they're just they're able to get one more goal than us. Um, and that's that's what I would expect in the next game is that it to be really really tight and we got to find a way to get on the right side of it. So right. you, obviously you come right back with David Camp. You know, what, what do you hope he takes out of what happened Saturday into this trip and, and beyond? Well, it's just the urgency that we need him to have, you know, in, in really um, understanding how important his role is, not just like it's been uh, here. He's a very, very important player for us, and, and uh, we need him to really take charge of that role and take charge of, of his line. And um, that's really a bit of a reset and, and recognizing that we're serious about the urgency that we need him to have. And I, and I think he's played he's played good hockey here in the last month or so. Um, but to me, the other night was a bit of a step back towards some of the issues that I was having with him early in the season, which we had talked a number of times about and given him, uh, you know, opportunities to keep going and keep playing through it, which he had. But when when some of those same mistakes were showing up and the, and the results for a team aren't there, I think you elicit a response from the coach, and that's kind of the way way that it goes. But it does not change how we feel about uh, Camper and. and what he means to our team. He's he's a he's a very very important player for us, and, and made him to be better, and he will be. Ryan right. said he's uh, feeling good after being on the ice today. He hopes to be available on this trip. Do you feel he's in a position to, to get back? What well, well, today is his first 
first practice with the team, so it's been a few weeks since since he's been able to skate. So I would say he's he's not quite there yet, uh, from my perspective. But I think from a, from a health perspective, he seems to be working his way there. You know, getting him up to game speed and being ready to play in the game is another thing. But now we'll get out to California, and we don't have any practices uh, um, until. Uh, day before San Jose, whatever day that's going to be. Um, so, you know, we'll see kind of where he's at at that point in time. But uh, from my perspective, he's not he's not where we need him to be at this at this stage. We need to keep building him up. How much of an advantage to have a guy like Martin Jones around right now? And on this trip in some rinks, he was very familiar with him. Yeah, obviously huge to have him, you know, to have him here and how he's played for us. You know, you, you look at it and I think, uh, you know, coming into today's practice, we basically had – you know, probably certainly goalie three and Marty Jones and and probably goalie five and and Hildeby, um, who was you know when we come into training camp you know he had Petrozelli was getting a little more time than than Hildeby and you thought he was going to take take the year to be a developmental year for him and and uh, now you got those two guys here and you're and you're counting on them but to have someone with Jones' uh, experience in the league uh, to just be calm and and confident. Uh, has really helped our team. Uh, yeah, going into familiar buildings, as you as you mentioned, I hadn't thought of that uh, a great deal. But I think that's again just the, the the value of having the experience, and and then on the other side of it, yeah, I think having a young guy like Hildeby, and you know he's a he's an older goaltender than what you would. Th- you know, than most that come over and play, you know, are playing their first year in, in the American League, but still has lots to learn uh, and a long ways to go. So for him to come up and in our situation still have a veteran to, to lean on and to watch and to learn from is very valuable for him as well.